What's up guys and welcome back to another video. We're back out here at the bait making station today and today we're going to be making one of the sneakiest Ned Rig baits that I have ever thrown. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from beginning to end on the plastic making process to show you guys how easy that it actually is. Because the last video that I made with some plastics, some of you guys were kind of concerned that it was a little too complicated for you guys to actually get into when really it's not. So we're going to break it down from beginning to end today and make a super sneaky Ned Rig bait. So like I said, we're gonna be making one of the sneakiest Ned Rig baits that I have ever thrown today using the Do It Molds molds. And I was actually turned on to this shape by my good friend, Mr. John Dalton over at Creek Fishing Adventures. And that is the Helgramite. If you guys have never thrown a Helgramite on the back of a Ned Rig, it is such a fantastic shape. And it's something that not a lot of people are throwing, but is super, super effective. And today we're gonna to be using the Do It Molds Helgi mold to actually make this bait. And if you guys wanna pick this mold up, everything that I use today plus this mold will be linked down below for you guys to check out. So without further ado, we're gonna go from raw plastisol all the way to a finished Helgi bait that you guys can go out and throw wherever you guys happen to be throwing a Ned Rig. So making plastics is a little bit more involved than making lead heads, but the process is just as easy. You just gotta have all the right equipment. So for the first thing that you're going to need is a Pyrex bowl. This Pyrex bowl is what you're actually going to warm your plastisol up in to get it to the form and where it's actually able to be injected into the mold and to make some plastics. You guys are obviously gonna need the mold. Again, we're using the Helgi mold today. It's linked down below in the description. You guys are gonna need some of these quick grips. These quick grips actually hold this mold together because some of these molds are two pieces Pieces. Some of them have a hinge like this Helgramite mold does. It just depends. But these quick grips help to put pressure on both sides of that mold to make sure that you get a good, clean pour. The next thing, which is something that you need in both the lead and the plastic, is a pair of heat gloves. These heat gloves are going to keep your hands safe when you're dealing with this really hot material because this stuff is going to be 285 degrees once we get it up to temp. Then you guys are going to need your colorants and your different oils and things things like that in your additives. Now today we're gonna to be using a couple different colors, couple different additives, which I'll go through here in just a minute. But realistically, you don't need the additives. It's just something that I like to add to my plastics that helps to take it to that level where it's specific to what I want. So we'll get into the colors and the additives here in just a second. Then you guys are also gonna need something to stir your plastisol with as it warms up. I use just an old butter knife to do that. And last but not least, and probably the most important part of the whole process, is your plastisol. So this is two gallons of plastisol here. You guys can buy this in quarts, half gallons, gallons, two gallon, all the way up to I think five gallon do it molds makes. Today we're gonna to be using just the essential series and this is the normal formula. So this is kind of an in-between between soft and hard. I would call it a medium probably be the best way to describe it and we're going to add some additives to it to just make it a little bit softer but this essential series plastic is a little bit more prone to the heat and so you want to be a little bit more careful with it you really want to take your time warming it up but i really love this plastic because it's just a good middle of the road plastic it's not too expensive and it really makes some good plastic baits and so those are the things that you need to actually make these plastics it's not a whole ton of of stuff but like I said just a little bit more involved now let's start getting some plastic all mixed up here let's start getting some plastic all warmed up and we will get it into our mold so the first thing that you want to do with your plastic all is give it a good shake you always want to make sure that your plastic all is mixed up really really good because what happens over time is that plastic all will settle down into the bottom of the container and when it settles down into the bottom of the container if you just get that bottom stuff, that stuff that isn't mixed up, your plastic isn't going to pour right. Now what's really cool about this container of Plastisol is it's got this little nozzle right here on the end. So what you can do is just sit it on the edge of a table or something like that, put your Pyrex up underneath it, and just simply open up that spout. Now we're gonna do about half of a cup of plastic because to be totally honest with you, this Helgi mold does not take 
much plastic at all. So like I said, about half a cup of Plastisol is all you're going to need. Now this is Plastisol in its raw form. It's got this milky look to it. And I know what you're saying, Alex, how do you put dye and stuff into that and turn it into a plastic? Well, what we actually have to do is heat it up in the microwave to get it to form into that clear Plastisol that we can add our color to, and then that will actually be injected into our mold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to the microwave and start incrementally warming this stuff up. And while we do that, I wanna to talk to you guys about some of the additives and colors that we're gonna be using today. All right guys, so one thing that you can do is get an instant read thermometer and actually read the plastic temperature as you're working with it. Now, the way that I learned to do it, I actually learned to do it by just looking at it, by doing it by the eye. And so I kind of know what this plastic should look like when it gets up to temperature. And so I'm just gonna start incrementally warming it up 30 seconds to a minute at a time. You don't wanna just sit it and forget it because this Plastisol will start to degrade pretty quickly the more heat that you apply to it. And so you just wanna be careful with it. Now, one thing that you wanna do before you actually start cooking your plastic is add all the additives that you want to add to it. Not your color, just your additives. And so the two additives that I'm going to use today is some Plastisol stabilizer. Now this stuff is really, really good. Like I said, that plastic will degrade the more heat that you apply to it. What the Plastisol stabilizer does is it helps to kind of counteract that process of the breakdown. And so it just helps you to have a little bit more room for air when you're actually warming up your plastic. And then the next thing is a little bit of Plastisol softener. Now I know what you're saying, Alex, why wouldn't you just get a softer Plastisol to begin with? Well, what this softener does in a form that's just, just a little bit harder, it gives you ultimate control. You can really play with how many drops of the softener you put into the Plastisol, which really leads to being able to make the bait specifically how you want it. And it really takes that whole, you know, personalized bait making thing to the next level. So what we're gonna do is we are going to shake up our stabilizer first. Hopefully not throw it in the floor. We're gonna put about four drops of stabilizer in. So one, two, three, four. Four. And obviously the more Plastisol you use, the more stabilizer you wanna use. For about every half cup of Plastisol I'm using, I'm using about four drops of stabilizer. Then we're also gonna shake up our Plastisol softener. And we're going to do one, two, three, four drops just like that. Then you want to take your butter knife, the butter knife of doom here, and go ahead and give that a little bit of a mix just to get that all incorporated in there. And then we're gonna stick it into the microwave, start letting this stuff cook up. Now, like I said, about 30 seconds to a minute is all that you want to do, just incremental small steps. Now today, I have to figure out what color of these Helgis, these Helgramites that I actually want to pour. We've done a lot of stuff in the methylate orange. You guys can probably recognize the Katana Crawl from a video a few weeks back. We did those bright orange claws on the back and I've actually got a bunch of those in the boat. And so what I'm thinking about doing today is a green pumpkin um, looking Helgramite. You know, kind of go with that natural look that those Helgramites have. Those Helgramites are very dark most of the time they're almost a black color, um, but my good buddy, Mr. John Dalton, has been having a ton of success with a green pumpkin-esque color. So I think we're gonna go some green pumpkin and we might do a little bit of black flake in there and maybe just a little bit of gold flake as well, just to add a kind of cool you know, definition to that bait. Now it's been about a minute here. Now, as you guys can see, not much change has happened. That is still completely raw Plastisol. So we just wanna go ahead and stick it back in there and let it go for another minute and just keep watching it as we go. So from here, we're gonna wait till that Plastisol cooks up and gets that clear color that we're looking for before we add our colorant. But again, we're gonna go with a green pumpkin, gold and black flake. And honestly, I can't wait to see how that color turns out. All right guys, so it's been about two minutes on the cooking process. And as you guys can see there, hopefully, we're starting to get a little bit different consistency with this plastic. That's because this stuff is starting to cook up. And what you guys will actually see in there, you can probably see it starts to get kind of this yellowish color to it. It's like milky and yellow. What that means is we are getting close to where we want it to be. You guys can also see it starts to thicken up, get a lot more viscosity to it. And that just means that we're getting to the point where we want it to be. So from here on out, 
I'm gonna go about 30 seconds at a time, no more than that, just to make sure that we're not overcooking that plastic and that we're pulling it out right when we want it to, to make sure that we've hit the temperature that we want it to, and then we'll actually add our colorants and our flake. All right guys, so it's been about another 30 seconds and you guys can see the change already. This stuff is getting up to temp really quickly. It is getting to where we want it. And like I said, just 30 seconds at a time. You do not want to overcook this stuff. And you guys can see just in that short 30 second window, how quickly that stuff changed. So we're gonna go about another 30 seconds here and we should have a change again. I'm probably looking at another minute before this stuff's cooked up. Important thing, go ahead and put on your heat gloves because you're dealing with some really hot stuff. So we are almost there. We've got a few more chunks in there. We're actually gonna stir it up a little bit. Moving around, stirring it really, really helps, um, especially when you're warming it up. Just kind of helps to get those chunks broken down. And I mean, we are almost there. I'm gonna literally go 30 more seconds and we're gonna start adding our coloring. But like I said, you know, I'm already dealing with some really hot stuff just with my injectors and all that sitting there on my little griddle top. And so you want to make sure go ahead and have your gloves on and be uh, be careful because this stuff is really, really hot. All right. And I would say that we are ready. You guys can see it's running smooth. It's running clear that is ready to have some color added to it. And so we're gonna start with our green pumpkin color and you wanna go ahead and give it a really good shake. Make sure that all the color is mixed up in there. And we're gonna start, I want these to kind of be an almost natural kind of deal. So less color equals more kind of translucent natural colors. And so we're gonna start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 drops of this colorant. So this is the X2 colorant. It's gonna be a lot more potent than your normal colorant. So when you go to order anything on Do It, if you see in that X2 on there, that just means it's super duper potent. So we're gonna go ahead and go 10 drops because I want it to have some, you know, obviously have a good uh, base to it and have you know, that dark green pumpkin that we're looking for that have just a little bit of translucence too. So when I'm fishing these creeks, it's natural. You guys can see there, that actually looks really, really good. That's actually exactly what I was looking for. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of black flake and a little bit of gold flake to bring it home. So um, we're gonna go about a one fourth of a teaspoon. Let's go half of that. We're gonna go about half of one fourth of a teaspoon of black. And then I say we do a full fourth of a teaspoon of gold. And so that is the 0 0.5 or 0 0.15 gold hex and the 0 0.15 black hex that I'm using in here. So when you go looking, that is what I am using. And that black is gonna give it just a little bit more definition while also like kind of making that green pop and that gold is gonna help that green pop as well. That flake does a really good job of just making those colors pop out and give it a really unique look. You guys can see there, man, that is actually really awesome. Almost gives it like a goldish, translucent look, which I really, really like. That's actually exactly what I was looking for. That's like a smally smasher right there. That's a, that's a kind of a color pattern that I'm sure my good buddy, Mr. Benjamin Nowak, would dig. So we're gonna stick this back in here for about 30 seconds just to get it warm again, get that viscosity going, and get ready to pour it. So what we wanna do is we've got our mold here. I've got it all prepped. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little clamp, you're gonna stick it on the end of the mold away from the hinge. And if you've got a two-piece mold, you're just gonna put one on each side. So you're gonna go ahead and put it on there, clamp it down, and all that does is just seal all that up. It's gonna keep the plastic from running out anywhere, from getting any over pour, and it's just gonna allow that pour to come out super duper clean. We're gonna set this over here to the side. We're gonna get both of our heat gloves on because we're about to be dealing with some really hot materials. And we're gonna get this thing injected up. So what I like to do, and again, I actually learned this from my good buddy, Mr. Benjamin Nowak, is I don't pull the plastic into the injector. So I'm not sticking the injector down in there and pulling it out. What I actually do is I pour the plastisol into the top of the injector. So we're just gonna take this, 
pour it straight into the injector just like that. Now, like I said, this mold is not very big. It's only two cavities, so it isn't gonna take much plastic at all to actually fill this mold up, and so we're not gonna put much plastic in our injector. So now we're gonna pour our mold over here. Let's go ahead and inject this stuff up and see how it goes. So when it comes to injecting, you guys will see, I kind of pushed and what you'll feel is a little bit of resistance on the injector. That's how that you know that you have injected all the way down to the mold is full. And then you want a little bit of run over. You know, don't be afraid to create a little bit of a mess like that right there. What that does is it makes sure that there's plenty of plastic down in that mold to fill that mold all the way in. Because you gotta imagine, just like anything else, when it's hot, it's gonna expand more and as it cools, it contracts and that little part on top right there will actually sink down into the mold and if you don't top it off completely on the top, what'll happen is that won't pour completely down in there and you won't get a good pour on this. And so this is gonna start cooling up. You guys obviously can see we've got our plastic here. I got the injector that's got some plastic in the end of it and then we've got some plastic all over our cup like this right here. So what you actually do with that, with your heat gloves on, you can go ahead and just grab that because you guys can see that's already cooled enough that you can grab a hold of it. You just throw it right down into your Pyrex like that right there. Then you're just gonna pop the top off of your injector like that right there and you're gonna pour out all the extra plastic from your injector just like that and then you're just gonna plop it right back down into your Pyrex and all of that plastic can be reused here in just a second to pour even more of our Helgies that we're gonna pour. Cause we're pouring two at a time. And so that means that we probably can pour up, I mean, with this batch of plastic, realistically, you could probably pour up 20 of these things. We'll probably pour up 10 to 11 just so we got a good solid bag of them just in case we get on a really good bite that we're able to stay on the bite. Um, but we'll just set this over to the side and let's go ahead and open up our mold and see what our bait looks like. Now this mold is cold to the touch right now. As we pour more plastics into it, it will get hotter and hotter and hotter. So you just want to be careful. Um, make sure you got your heat gloves on the more that you pour in there, but that first run, that plastic is going to, or that mold is going to cool off pretty quickly. And so we can pull them out. You guys can see there, that is our little bitty green pumpkin gold flake Helgi. And that is an awesome, natural presentation to throw on really any Ned rig, but that is just an awesome little sneaky bait. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this little bit of extra right here, just like that. Really simple, plop it down into your Pyrex and you guys have a finished Helgi that you can throw on the back of a Ned rig. Super finesse presentation, great for creeks, rivers and stuff like that. It's one of my favorite, favorite baits, but we've got a bunch more to pour. So let's keep on pouring. All right, I'll be totally honest, I went through that a little bit quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slow it down to make sure that you guys understand every single step of the process. So now when we go to remelt plastics, so we're remelting down the little bitty, um, I forgot what they call the little thing, like the little extra plastic that comes out of your injector and out of your mold. As we melt that down, it's the same process as what we talked about earlier. Slow and methodical, about every 30 seconds you're gonna want to pour pull that stuff out of there and actually give it a stir. And so don't get in a super big hurry when you are remelting this stuff because what you'll do is you'll actually burn the plastic and then you'll just be out a bunch of plastic that you could have used to make more baits. And so as you guys can see, there's like chunks and stuff in there. It's not completely melted. You just kind of want to give it just a gentle stir and then get all that extra off of your knife there get it back down there in the bottom and then we'll stick it back in there for about 30 more seconds and just keep on doing that 30 second incremental thing until we are done. We can go ahead and get our mold prepped again. Really, really simple. You're just gonna clamp that one end down just like that and that's gonna make sure that we've got a good clean pour and then our injector is ready to go right now, cool to the touch again, but as we do this more and more and more, these things are going to become hot so you wanna make sure that you've got your heat gloves on. Now I like this little mold because it's two at a time. You know, if you, uh, if you mess up a color or 
you get something that's not exactly like what you want, you're not out like six or seven baits at once. This is a great mold for beginners because it's not a very big bait and it's very user friendly as far as having the hinge on it and everything like that. We're gonna go about 20 more seconds on that and it should be ready. And so if you're looking to get into pouring plastics for the first time, I would highly suggest a smaller cavity mold, meaning you know this only has two baits that can actually be poured. There's two cavities in this mold. So don't get something like eight or nine cavities because the more cavities, the more room for error there is. The less cavities, the less room for error, or vice versa. There's more room for error with less cavities, less room for error with more cavities. And so that should be about ready. All right, let's go through this one step at a time. You're going to take your injector. You're gonna take the tip off of your injector. Now some people actually like to stick the tip down in there and suck out the plastic. Mr. Benjamin Nowak taught me to pour the plastic in the end. So then what you're going to do is you're going to have your injector here. You're going to take your Pyrex and you're gonna pour that plastic straight into the injector. This isn't a very big mold, so again, it's not gonna take much plastic. You're going to take your injector tip and you're gonna stick it back onto your injector. Then, you've got your mold here. You're gonna take your injector and this tip matches up with this hole on the mold. Very, very simple. You're going to push, 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 push. You're gonna feel a little bit of resistance. That means that your mold is full. Pull off and go ahead and top off that mold with a little bit of extra plastic just like that. Again, do not be afraid to make a mess because it's very easy to clean up and you wanna make sure that your mold's completely full. All of your extra plastic, we're going to shoot it into our mold, being very careful. You'll see a little bit of a separation in your injector. Right there, you guys can probably see that little bit of a separation, and as I push on this more, it separates more. What that is, is that's the end of your injector, your pusher pushing against your injector tip and you don't want to pop that off into your plastic it is able to be cleaned off but it's just a hassle of a process then you're going to sit this over here just with your pyrex and everything start letting everything cool down just a little bit because there's probably still some liquid plastisol in your injector you want to give it just a minute to cool down before you start trying to actually clean that injector out and get it ready for the next pour and as you guys can see there our plastisol is starting to cool in our mold so we're going to have two more helgies here in just a minute. Now, just as we've been talking, this has probably been enough time for all of this to actually solidify in our injector. So what we're gonna do is with your gloves on, you're gonna grab it, pull it off. You guys can see straight through the injector. Sometimes this little plastic penis looking thing here, I don't even know what you call that, will get stuck in here. It's really, really simple. You just grab a hold of it and pull it out. Then we're gonna push up on this and this is actually what's going to come out of your injector. That's all the extra plastic that was in your injector that you didn't use. Just drop it back into your Pyrex. Again, you're gonna have this right here where you poured your plastic. Just go ahead and pour that off, drop it down into your Pyrex, and your Pyrex and your injector are ready for the next injection cycle. Then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna go ahead and pull our little clamp off of our mold. We're gonna open our mold up, just taking your time. And there you go, a couple fresh Helgi's to be taken out. Now this is really, really simple to take these out. You can go ahead and actually take your gloves off for this part. You just wanna pull those out of there, just like that. And you guys are gonna see, this is what you have. This is, you know, kind of the untrimmed version of your plastic. You guys are gonna see, it is made to be pulled off right there. If I put just a little bit of tension on it, you're gonna see, boop, it just pops right off. Boop, it just pops right off. And then this, goes back in your Pyrex for your next pour. And again, you have two more little Helgi's ready to be put on the back of a Ned Rig. And that's as simple as the process is, guys. Do not be afraid of this process. It's super duper simple. It's really, really easy to make plastics. And you know, I'll be totally honest with you. You're gonna mess it up the first about five times that you do it but that is part of the learning process the more you do it the better that you'll get at it and as you guys can see in just a matter of a few minutes we've already got four helgies ready to go and that awesome green pumpkin gold and black flake and you know the possibilities are endless for what you guys can do if you follow me on instagram you'll have seen that i've done a couple helgies in the bright orange color i've done some helgies in the chartreuse color I've done all kinds of baits and all kinds of different varieties and that's the coolest part about this 
is that is a completely custom Helgramite style bait that maybe no one else is throwing. And so that's really the coolest part of that. And like I said, super duper easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here, we're gonna keep on remelting some plastic, we're gonna keep on pouring some plastic, and we're gonna make ourselves up a mess of Helgies. And hopefully you guys, after watching this, have a lot more confidence that you guys can go out and make your own soft plastic baits. And just like that, we are done. And like I said, it's not something to be intimidated by. The plastics making process is easy, it's fun, and it allows you to make some really awesome, sneaky little Ned Rig baits like the Helgi that we made today. So if you're looking to do this yourself and you're looking for the right tools for the job, make sure to go down in the description or in the pinned comment and check out all the Do It Molds products and I'm gonna be linking. Also, there will be a discount code, it's RUD15. It's gonna save you 15% off your entire order. Now here's the deal, that discount code is only good through March 6th through the 12th. So make sure and get your order in before that discount code runs out and get yourself the equipment that you need to make some Helgies and to probably outfish everybody around you because not very many people have figured the Helgi bite out just yet. As always, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, you guys are sweet. And we will see you next time.